just see if I get it pinned straight and pin it, let's see. Oh, I want to drive this car for longer. Oh my days. Buy this car. Stop watching the review now and buy a GTI Club Sport. Oh. Oh my god. I like having the face view so you can actually see because you know if I'm just absolutely bullshitting you. You'd be able to tell it in my face. Hi there guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Join me once again with Mark 7 Golf R to talk a little bit around and compare the Mark 8 Golf R to the Club Sport or the CS45 edition that's um, yeah now being released. We know a lot more information about it. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I've done a lot of content around both these two cars. And this video is actually off the back of a subscriber sort of commenting and mentioning about the two and sort of asking for my opinion. So I figured I'd do a video and I'd share it with you all. So yeah, let's get straight into this one. Yes, welcome back to another video. I hope everyone is all well. Now, this one is really, really important. I really do feel um, these two cars are kind of the top of the golf, sporty golf range and top of the VW sporty range, if that makes sense. Certainly in terms of the most sort of fun performance car you can have, even if it's not necessarily as big a power as you would possibly imagine, um, these cars are brilliant. Now, I've had the pleasure of driving a Golf 8R recently, you know, check that out on my channel as well. And I've also driven a GTI Club Sport. Um, both cars I hope to get back on the channel as well soon as well. Um, now the standard GTI Club Sport is fundamentally exactly the same as the CS45. So in terms of driving dynamics, you're not gonna get anything different. But the CS45, as I've explained in other videos, you get like the Akraprovich exhaust, the standard. It's, yeah, it's a little bit more sporty, a little bit more premium, I guess, and obviously a little bit more special in that regards. So let's compare the two. So both cars, give or take, is 300 horsepower, 300 horsepower for the CS45, 320-ish for, uh, for the R. The R has its four-wheel drive traction, the CS45 has its front wheel drive. So, you know, whatever one you prefer out of those is probably going to be the one that you go for. They are fundamentally very different cars, um, but you get all the benefits of the usual Golf. And that's why, you know, I love this car so much, my Mark 7 Golf R. Um, I just think they offer so, so much at the best possible price you can get. And um, residually, these cars are great as well. So you've got all the benefits of there. And they're just Golfs at the end of the day. You know, if, I don't know, if you broke your indicator switch, it's a Golf. It's not like some sort of special edition limited run kind of thing, you know, you're not gonna, it's not gonna break the bank basically. So that's great. Now, I loved driving the GTI Club Sport. It was so, so much fun, but it could still easily be used day to day. You know, the people that I, I spoke to and he was telling me that, you know, they, they do pl put plenty of miles on it and it's fine. I can totally get that. It can be more chilled out. I found the Golf 8R more easier for like a daily chilled out commute and it was faster, but it sort of masked its speed, if that made sense, the Golf 8R. So that's one thing to kind of notice. You don't really notice how fast you're really going, <laughs> just because it's effortless traction. Whereas you've got to work a little bit harder with the club sport, um, and you feel a little bit more involved, and, and that, that's quite cool. Now, what one would I go for at this particular time? Well, I'll be honest with you, it hasn't taken long for the Golf 8R to be out for a couple of months, and I'm already seeing plenty of them sort of on the road. I've seen more of those than I have seen of standard GTI club sports, if I'm honest. And um, because of that, I feel that they are going to be very popular cars, which is great. It's why I love my channel. It's why I love the community of it. You know, get involved in the comments. You know, let me know how you're getting on with yours, whether you've got a Golf 8R, GTI, whatever, 7R, 7.5, really know how you're finding it at this period of time, particularly as the world where in the UK, we can get out a little bit more and have some fun in these cars. You know, I've certainly had some nice drives recently in this, but that does mean that it's not necessarily as unique as you might think. And that's where I would probably lean at this particular time. RRP, I'm not talking about discounts or anything like that. They're very similar, 39,200, I think for an 8R without any options. And it's like 39,600 for a 45 CS, no options. Obviously, you're going to want to put one or two options on, which is going to put you over the 40 grand mark, but it's up to you how you spec it at the end of the day. At that price and at this period in time, particularly as it's so so difficult to get hold of cars, the car market has absolutely gone all over the place. You know, as it dipped so much last year because of, you know, the initial beginnings of um, coronavirus, um, now it's just like everyone's like, oh my God, I need a car. And um, as, yeah, the su supply isn't there for the demand that's there. And it's as simple as that. So in that regards, new cars kind of make sense. 
I think the limited nature, I don't know the production number on the CS45, but there are going to be a hell of a lot less out there than there are going to be 8Rs. And I think as both were such brilliant cars, and there was so little to choose between them, I was really surprised about that. I was ready to kind of say Golf 8R is just so much better. But um, I, I felt they were very, very similar. Personally, for me, you know, it's rained again today. It rains all the it rains all the time in the UK. It's just one of those things. And I love the chilled out nature of the whole four wheel drive. And um, yeah, even just basic boring things like pulling out of roundabouts is quite entertaining. But yeah, I got the whole sort of fun factor of the GTI Club Sport. I still think, it, I mean, my car's got a manual gearbox. I still think it should have a manual gearbox, certainly as an option. And um, they did that with the 40th edition with the 7R. And I'm surprised they haven't just thrown it in, you know. It's all budgets. It's all very difficult at, at this time. And VW have their eyes set on electric, which, yeah, it's going to be what it's going to be. I should stress, it's like the, the cars are very similar in terms of what you're going to be, sort of like maintenance and stuff like that as well. It's the EA AAA engine. They both got very similar power plants. You know, th there's not that much difference. A bit of tweak in the ECU is really the only difference. Um, and then the four wheel drive. So for the question of the person that asked me, I sort of said, you know what, I'd probably go for a CS45. Um, if, if you're asking me right now, if I had to buy one of those cars, that's what I'd go for. Give it a couple of years and I might have a different opinion just because of prices and where things are at. Um, but I think if you want one of the most fun golfs you can get and to be special and limited and the fact that you just don't know where these performance petrol powered cars are going to go. Um, I don't see a whole transition with hybrid happening because that's what I kind of thought with the 8R. Um, I think particularly in the UK as well, there's been government legislation to sort of say, oh, all cars are awful except for electric. That's kind of what they're going down. Um, and as a result of that, manufacturers aren't going to suddenly put as much effort into hybrid as they once were, which was a shame because they've obviously invested billions. So that was a great little a bit of a government legislation as we always get. But um, it is what it is. And because it's just so unknown, and if I was to lean towards what the 50th anniversary edition is going to be of the of the club sport the gti it's, it could be electric you know it really could maybe they would just convert the like the id3 I, I think someone i can't remember the name that people gave it but that you know they there's like an i i call it like an id3r or an id3 gti i think they have a different acronym for it um but they're going to be leaning towards that because that is the replacement golf basically they're just waiting for users to adopt it um so yeah if you want my opinion, that's what I'd go for. I think it is the slightly more fun car. I don't think it's as compromised on um, sort of a daily commute as you would think for something that is quite hardcore. Um, I think the CS45 comes with 19 as the standard. It's not. It's still not bad. You know, you can still live with it. And I think if you want that special occasion where if you don't drive your car so much, you know, I'm not putting as many miles on this. When I drive it, it's still so, so much fun, these cars. And I think that's something which not everyone can understand until, until you try them out but um, in short cs45 just about edges it for me as great as the 8r is i would i'd love to see some sort of limited golf 8r you know but actually something that has actually do that actually does something you know maybe a power gain um yeah something a little bit special will we get to see something like that i just don't know um, a golf 8r plus and I think that would kind of, you know, it would set the set the stalls out to say, you know, this is top of the tree. Whereas right now, and having driven them both, I'm kind of like, they're quite similar, quite similar. And um, then it just comes down to price and personal preference of front wheel drive versus four wheel drive. But CS45 is not, I don't, I haven't seen too much advertisement about it. So you might be watching this and going, what is the CS45? Check out other videos I've got on the car. Um, and I've obviously put up screenshots as I've been talking. And um, yeah, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. What one would you go to towards and why? Because I'm really interested to know. And I, a lot of, um, you know, it's a community channel on here. And if people get involved in the comments, people like a video as well, share, subscribe. It just helps to build the type of community that this channel is all about. Basically, that's all that it is, really. And um, I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the video. But um, yeah, as I said, liking the video really does help. So please do do that. You know, I know I've got quite a lot of you who are sort of like um subscribed and you've got all your notifications on which is fantastic if those if you do enjoy watching it all the videos that i do which um i massively appreciate please like it when you watch it um it makes a huge difference but thank you so much for watching let me know your thoughts in the comments two awesome cars no real wrong answer here 
and um, I'm interested to know your thoughts and if there's maybe something that I've missed that um, I can bring up in a in a future video. But listen, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.